Okay. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Uh, let's get started on our prayer and those who are joining us on our live stream. Uh, so let's <coughs> sing this first song, Because He Lives. Okay. God send His Son, number 10, sing. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to I my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is done. Because I know He holds the future. And is worth the living just because he lives how sweet to hold a newborn baby and when i and toy he gives but great still the come as you this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he Because I know He holds the future And life is worth the living just Because He lives last And then one day I'll cross the of glory and I'll know He lives because He lives I can face tomorrow because He lives all fear is done because I know And life is worth the living just because He lives. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for that great song You sent Your Son and has given us life. And uh, because He lives, we can face uh, tomorrow the challenges, changes, and things that You want us to go through with the help of the Holy Spirit and with your power. Thank you for the free salvation that has been provided. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we can only come to you it's because of the Holy Spirit who would help us and present to you clean. Thank you so much for all your day-to-day -day provisions as well as the protection that you have given 
towards your people today and we do pray father that you would bless the remaining time of our uh, worship with you together with our brothers and sisters who are watching um, uh, virtually uh, joining us uh, may you prepare their hearts may you give them a teachable heart praying also for those who do not know christ yet that they might understand that they might come to know christ as their savior strengthen us of our faith and to those who have problems, maybe they want to help them. And to those uh, who are in need of guidance, uh, Lord, help them. And to those who are sick, may it touch their bodies that they might be healed. And then in the coming Sundays, that they will be joining us so that we can really worship together. Thank you for blessing your work. Thank you for blessing your people. Thank you for blessing us and giving us uh, peace of mind and joy and serving you faithfully and loving you. Thank you for your faithful people. Father, we pray that you would bless us and thank you for your presence. We know that you are in our midst today. Thank you so much for all your goodness. This we pray in the almighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, good evening to everyone. As usual, we have our prayer meeting uh, every Wednesday starting at 7.30. And a uh, reminder again, all the birthday celebrants, uh, you know those who are in the birthday celebrants, uh, please do so. And the uh, wedding celebrants uh, to bring food with you that we can be together this coming Sunday, uh, no pass. As I've said, but uh, if you can't, that's no problem. But it's a wonderful thing that you can share things as a, some sort of your thanksgiving to God. So please uh, do come early <coughs> every Sunday. Uh, we have a good Sunday school lessons uh, prepared by Father Ben. And uh, thank you so much for those who are coming early. And uh, also <clears throat> to those who are preparing things for our church and cleaning our church. Uh, there are some every Saturday once in a while. Uh, others are coming and those who are coming also early preparing things for our church. So I'd like to thank you personally for that. And uh, please do remember uh, our regular uh, prayer request to the government our uh, peace and order, our leaders, that they need to be prayed for, to be brought into the throne of God's grace. Frontliners, as we do always pray, remember them. And they, there are some brethren who are uh, in need of uh, prayer personally, that they approach you. Uh, if you want to include them to your personal prayer, so be it. If you want uh, to let them be in within our prayer list every Wednesday. Just tell me so this coming Sunday so that we can have it. Okay, so thank you for your continued support for our touches and our offerings and also for the support for our missionaries. Uh, next week we'll be sending the support for our missionaries and also we thank their faithfulness and their love for God. Uh, I will talk again to some of other pastors and missionaries that in some areas, uh, in the remote areas, they have a hard time now uh, of themselves. But nevertheless, uh, God has never shortened His hand in meeting the needs of our brethren and our fellow laborers in the Lord. And uh, then we uh, keep on praying uh, for our attendance. Uh, may the Lord uh, add more souls and uh, to the choir being led uh, by uh, Sister Joy. Though we will be missing her this coming Sunday, yet uh, the choir, I'm so grateful and thankful that you have given uh, your talents to the Lord. And to those who have talents, as I have announced and mentioned last Sunday if you know how to play guitar, flute, violin or whatever may accordions 
and if you have those instruments then bring it so that we can use it for the Lord and use your talents for the Lord and um, I know that it's a good thing for us because one good part of our worship to God is the music so when we have a wonderful music giving and honoring God that would be more acceptable so I guess that's all that uh, we are praying for um, pray one for another and uh, thank you for praying our help one with another uh, thank you so much uh, for that so um, uh, pray for those pastors that we are mentoring and they are almost through now uh, Lord willing um, we might be having a new subject for them by this mid of September so if that would be the case they have already taken two subjects so thank you so much for that so I guess that's all and um, I, I do pray that the Lord would maintain the work or the job that God has given to you to those who are working and please be grateful and be thankful to God and give God all the honor and the glory so that's it and uh, to those um, who are planning to travel I would say don't travel for a while because the COVID is surging again but uh, if you can't stop then so be it but take care of yourself okay so let's sing this song uh, number one how great thou art indeed our God is very very great okay so Oh Lord my God, see. Oh Lord my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands had made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout. The universe display Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art how great thou art and when i think that god is not sparing sent him to die i scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly buried he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art when christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration and they proclaim my god how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. Okay, thank you very much. And 
tonight. We're gonna get started on the book of Ecclesiastes. So if you have your Bible, please turn with me in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Uh, it is verses 1 to 20, but we're gonna uh, take verses 1 and 2 today uh, for us so that we can understand. Uh, it says in verse 1 and 2, Dead flies okay, cause the ointment of the uh, apothecary, apothecary to send forth a stinking savor so that a little folly, him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart is at his right. A hand, but a fool's heart at his left. So we studied uh, and summarized the entire uh, chapters that we have already taken from chapter 1 to chapter uh, 10. Actually, this uh, and chapter 10 included to that uh, the problem has been explained. Um, then the first part is the problem not expanded but expounded the problem has been expounded and here it has been explained uh, by King Solomon and uh, about the problem that has been expounded and one of the things that we are to be uh, conscious I would say conscious and uh, have uh, some sort of um, desire is about the uh, wisdom uh, why and many times it has been repeated in the book of Proverbs as well as in the book of Ecclesiastes the word wisdom and here the entire chapter 10 I entitled wisdom is seriously recommended wisdom is seriously recommended by King Solomon to every child of God to everyone that has Christ as their personal Savior and to those who are being indwelt by the Spirit of God in fact in, even in the book of Colossians 3.16 it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom so since the time that we got saved that's the first wisdom that we could understand because uh, an educated person, a brilliant person, a smart person would never weigh that he would be able to understand salvation regardless of how intelligent he might be unless the working power of the Holy Spirit would open his mind by listening to God's word and by heeding to God's word. That's why the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God so when the word of God is being expounded much more explained about the importance of salvation that there's no other way wherein man can have his salvation apart from the Lord Jesus Christ it's very clear that the Bible states Christ is the only way he made himself on that uh, clear he said is the way the truth and the life in John 14 and then he said no one cometh to the Father but by me so who gave you the faith who gave you the understanding of the truth and then no other than the Holy Spirit of God plus on top of that the Bible says the Word of God is quick and powerful sharper than two any edged sword plus uh, not only some uh, wise people, sometimes uh, when we talk about secular, uh, educated, and even well-off people, uh, even the well-off people, one of their problems is the material things and the blessings that they have that cause them to be hindered about understanding salvation. Because how in the world would he be able to say, I need to have Christ in order for me to be blessed? Because most of the time, the mentality of the people, 
is that the blessings is a more on term of what we call temporal and material riches and wealth of this world. But they have forgotten the most important wealth that one can have and possess is the eternal destiny and by having that is by receiving Christ as their own personal Savior as it has been promised by the Lord Jesus Christ. And then getting back in the book of Proverbs, King Solomon said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When people have given uh, the highest uh, uh, blessings and the highest honor and glory to God, uh, humbling down ourselves, knowing that we can save, it is only what God did plan and what Christ did uh, finish at the cross of Calvary, implemented by the Spirit of God, received by the people that one can say, that he is really wise. So Solomon here is talking about those who are in God to those who are in Christ, not just to ordinary people. And verses 1 and 2, honestly, it's really hard to be explained. I uh, look into it no less than almost uh, 10 hours uh, studying, looking for other things and some other commentaries that I could understand uh, because it did just simply say dead flies in Tagalog, mga patay na langa no? dead flies cause uh, the ornament of the apostatecary he said to send forth a stinking uh, saber so that a little folly uh, came uh, him that is of reputation for wisdom and honor until I prayed and I found out because wisdom has been recommended here is that um, it has been in verse 1 endorse the endorsement of wisdom because uh, why there is a death by an apportessary apportessary for those of you who do not know even if you're gonna google it or look at it into the Webs uh, dictionary for theory. It's all in English word. It's the pharmacy, wherein you get your medicine, wherein uh, they try to make some medicines and so on. The places where it could be. So what it has been said here that even a dead flies, if you're gonna bring it to the apothecary and they're gonna do something, putting something into it, that stinking smell would be changed into a good smell that you would never realize that it did come from the dead flies. So what does it mean, the part two of that? The part two, it says, uh, so that a little folly or the emptiness or the, the nothingness of the person or the stupidity of the person, it says, uh, the folly, him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. The second part of that speaks about the reputation of mankind, the dignity of one person. Every person, whether unsaved or saved, believer or unbeliever, people are so very much conscious about their dignity, about their reputation. And um, one of the things that dignity can never be gotten by how you're excelling good things can never be gotten by other things. But here it has been stated that uh, an empty or a person who doesn't know because he's just relying on those uh, uh, simple thing and shallow thing wherein their dignity could be respected by the people not necessarily that people would be amazed, but people would be looking at you with, with great uh, respect and they would be happy seeing you having that kind of life, having that kind of attitude. It needs to have wisdom. It can never be gotten by what we call by our excellency, by uh, our accomplishment and other things, but it could be gotten within the wisdom on how are we going to use it. So the verse one speaks about the endorsement of wisdom because 
why is it wisdom is very necessary because it says in here very clear um, so that a little folly it says him that is in reputation people who hold on their reputation they're so proud enough and so on it says for wisdom and honor and uh, that is what we call a uh, dignity uh, the right kind of dignity so number one under that the endorsement of wisdom is that wisdom would never demand dignity so the more you are being blessed by God the more you know the truths of God's word the more you are being uh, grounded of God's truth whether whether secular thing uh, whether on your profession uh, in line up your profession or your duties or whatever may whether in terms of our services whether in terms of our friendship or whether in terms of our uh, services or relationship and fellowship with God the Bible has given us uh, the right thing on how are we going and the right way on how are we going uh, to communicate and to have fellowship with God and to do things for God. In fact, uh, there are a lot of things from the scripture in Colossians, in Ephesians, in Galatians, and one of the things that has been stated in Colossians, for example, in terms of our services, he said that whatever we do, uh, not in the book of Corinthians, do it heartily. He said uh, not uh, for the glory of God, but do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men even where you work at uh, even then that you might say oh i applied for this work it was given to me and i'm doing well and uh, my manager or my boss or my supervisors are very happy of what i'm doing and so on and they tend to love me and so on but you see you don't demand dignity because when you do things the right wisdom is that the bible says whether by helping or whether by work, when you do that and your spirit uh, is doing it for the glory and your spirit is doing it for the sake of Christ. Because the Bible says that where you are, it is the Lord who put you there. And wherever, where you are, you are not actually indirectly, you might say, uh, you are not serving, uh, you are serving God directly, you're serving your boss. But in its entirety, it is the Lord who put you there for a purpose. So when your mind and your heart is set, that is the right wisdom, God has given me this, and I do the best that I could, that's the kind of wisdom you don't need to demand dignity or to create or to build up respect so that the people would have a great respect to you. You don't need to demand it. Respect will just be given to you. Respect would just be uh, shown or exercised uh, to you by the people because, not because you deserve it, but because they have seen who you are and what you are. That is the most important thing, even in the things that we do. Uh, not because you have done something. Oh, I've done that, I've done this. No, sir. Again, we have to get back to what the Bible says. Uh, whatever we do, do it heartily. Not only that, he said in Corinthians, uh, whether you eat or drink, do it for what purpose? For the glory of God. That's why the wisdom has been endorsed. Speak see the folly of the reputation of the person. Because people uh, tend to lean on their achievement, tend to lean on what they achieve, what they have, and uh, things that they are being so i would say the word blessed in terms of temporal and material things so that uh, they can gain uh, respect towards other people people would say because he did that because of this if that would be the case then we're stealing the glory to god rather than giving the appropriate glory to our heavenly father to the pastors and to the works as i always tell them it's not how big it is not how small it is not uh the numeric likewise even the giving likewise uh just this morning i talked to one pastor and then he has a big church and i and he, he agreed with me he said what is more important for us men of god 
uh, the servants of God is very clear that how good you are and how competent you are, how wise you are, but it says in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, moreover, it is required that a steward, that a man be found faithful. So that is the most important thing, whether uh, just a handful of people, whether uh, thousands of people, whether a big building, whatever may, the Lord is expecting from you the right kind of attitude and the Bible says be faithful. That's why when you have that wisdom, it won't demand dignity. Okay? Secondly, wisdom not only would never demand dignity, wisdom could never distract by any critical issues. Because you know what you're doing. It is the good thing. We have the Word of God, and the Bible teaches us on how are we going uh, to serve the Lord, not only why we have to serve God, how are we going to serve God, when we are going to serve God, what if we're going to serve God. The Bible has to say on all those things while we live in this world. How are you going to work? Where you work at? How are, why do you work in there? And for what reason you work in there? It is really for your bread and butter, for your, <coughs> excuse me, for your livelihood and other things for your family <coughs> and so on. And yet, uh, the Bible made it clear uh, that the things that we do, it, it should be done uh, sincerely and it should be done uh, from the heart. Do it heartily. The Bible says that means not eye-pleasing, uh, to be pleased by mankind. Uh, because there is a tendency that we become proud when people would really tell us this and that or how good you are and so on. There's nothing for the people to appreciate what you're doing. Uh, but if we are Christians, uh, is that whatever uh, the thing, whether it is a good uh, words that you have uh, heard and received the criticism it might be positive it might be negative and the situation it might be severe you are uh, going into the process of uh, being molded uh, by the lord and uh, being purged by the lord because there are a lot of things that we may never uh, like it and we don't really like it much more hardships and in the ministry, even where you work at and what we do, ain't that easy that we can simply adjust, that we can simply understand. Sometimes even then that we have to do our best, as I always say, regardless of how you try to do the best that you could in terms of your friendship, in your work or anything else, it, you cannot please everybody. And you would agree with me on that. Uh, you, you have no kind... Uh, you have no thinking or within yourself uh, no idea that you do this because uh, you want to uh, tell the people and uh, you, I would say that they would really tell that you are this and you are that and uh, that's one thing uh, that we want to hear from them of a good thing and so on to impress them. No, we are not like that. But because we are God's children and we simply do what God wants. That's why even to the pastors, preachers, or even Sunday school teachers, I always tell even the pastors uh, with regards to pul uh, pulpit manner, when you preach, whether there are two or three, whether there are ten, because the, the practicality and the simplicity, for example, in preaching, much more when the pastor is being invited to preach, uh, is that, they wanted to see good crowds or big crowds. And if there are good crowds and big crowds, and they are on fire, and they are so very much motivated, and uh, they're so very aggressive in preaching. But when they go and they have seen that only a few people and not much, and that they're, they're not very happy, and uh, even sometimes condemn people. My friend, whether these are only two people or three people, 100 people, 1,000 people, God has put you there and God has a message for those people and that within your heart and within your mind put it that God has a message for these people that they need to have that they would be blessed and I can be used of God 
as its mouthpiece in blessing this person. But if your mentality is that, oh, it's because there, there are only few people, and even pastors, they even agree on that. Uh, when they are being invited and they have seen only a handful of people uh, uh, present and so on, then they're not so very aggressive. And that means you are men pleaser. See, you did come there even to share the word of God and to preach, not to please people, but to give the word of God that is needed to the people. Because if that kind of mentality would never be gone and erased from you, then whether you like it or not, you are a man pleaser instead of pleasing God. Regardless of how good the lesson might be. Because again, the lesson, it is not you who created it. It is only you that God has used, giving you the wisdom on how are you going to do it. But the lesson still did come from God in order to be given to God's people. And God has a purpose, probably even two or three or even twenty, why we need to deliver it to these people. That's one thing. So whether it is a good criticism, a bad criticism, whether it is a good situation, or whether it is a bad situation, whether it is hardship, whether it is for peace and... Uh, uh, I would say progress, whether negative or positive, true wisdom. That's exactly uh, it. It is not for yourself, glory. True wisdom could never distract. D I S, not D E. Distracted, okay, by uh, not being distracted by any critical issues. Some other workers. When you get started in the Lord's work, particularly in third world country, uh, most of the preachers who are being called of God, they go out by faith. So some of them are never even promised by their mother church that they would be fully supported because the mother church themselves don't have much that what we call a uh, fan because it is just but enough for the use of the church and local church. But you can help those people who were called of God to go out and to start the work. When we started the work uh, in the Philippines, I was only promised by our mother church that whatever remains to our tithes and offerings after all the expenses in the church, then we can give it to you. So there is no promise. Let's say, for example, uh, uh, pass forward today. Okay, Brother De La Cruz, we're going to support you $500 a week. So that would be $2,000 a month. I just passed forward it. Because back then, sometimes a week we are just even receiving 35 pesos. You know that? You might not believe it, but it's a reality. Uh, Sister Mirna, one of the nieces of my uh, wife, would go to Sister Diaz, the mother and uh, uh, of a brother Ben, um, Sister Sherilyn, Brother Jeff, and uh, Sister Christine uh, to come to go there and because she is our treasurer, she was our treasurer and asked for our love gift and sometimes she would just give 27 or 35 pesos, sometimes 100. But there is no definite amount that our pastor said, okay, we'll be supporting you 200 a month and that will be good. At least you have 200 pesos enough for your money for the whole month. But we don't have that. But because those are the critical issues. There are times that we even walk for uh, 6 to 10 k kilometers uh, going down to the river and going up just to have Bible study on the other side. I have said that already many times ago. But we never complain. It's a part of the ministry that God has given. And uh, when the Lord has seen your heart, that, that's how simple and how honest you are then the Lord will be the one to compensate in return in the future. That's why I told you, one of my favorite verses in my life is that what David said, I'd been young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor received begging bread. Adding it all for no less than five decades. Uh, just the, the Baptist of Mount Olives alone, no more than four decades, so more than that. And yet I've never seen God's hand has been shortened. So, uh, that is the wisdom. Uh, you would never complain. Is it really worth to serve the Lord? Is it really good for me to do that thing and so on? How come there are some oppositions? How come they are like this? My friend, 
It's a part of the ministry. It's a part of thing of our Christian life. So not only wise, uh, the wisdom uh, could never uh, dem would never demand dignity. Wisdom could never distract any critical issues. Wisdom save you on any distractions. When you have, uh, at the end, I'll be reading only one book so that you can understand. Wisdom save you on any distraction because you have the right standard and you do what is right. We try to do the best that we could and um, I would say giving the best that we could and striving uh, to obey the Lord completely, 100% with the guidance of the holy spirit with the molding of the holy spirit with the feeling of the holy spirit in the light of the scripture as we uh, thank jesus who save us and give honor to our heavenly father and so therefore when you have the right wisdom and then you would never be destroyed that means uh, as it has been said for example in the book of romans no one can separate us from the love of Christ. Even death, no principalities, and so on. It has been enumerated in there. So that's one thing. Uh, that's exactly what Solomon was telling. People depend and lean on their reputation, on their dignity, and uh, they want to stay on that. You cannot do it that way. It is only the Lord who would be able to protect you and to, sh to make you to stay for that thing. But of yourself, like for example, the champions, whether chess, whether uh, whether this is a boxing or karate, or whether it might be golf, or uh, whether it would be a basketball, just last night, the Wisconsin, Milwaukee, I mean, won after five decades. Remember that? Nobody knows uh, because it was the Lakers, I guess, last year because they thought that they might be do it again and so on. But uh, from nowhere, okay, the Milwaukee had it uh, against uh, Phoenix Suns. And uh, that's one thing uh, because life is cycle, remember? We studied that in the past. Uh, you might be today, tomorrow it might not be for you, including what you have. As Solomon had all those things, but to whom what Solomon had then, who owns it today, we don't even know now. But back then, Solomon said, these are all mine, and everything, and so on. Like what you and I are saying today, I have my house, I have my car, and, and even your house, that, that's not exactly a permanent house. Because probably how many of you, are the, are the, the among the owners of this, before you became the owner of this? So one thing. So, you'll never be distracted when you have the right wisdom. So, the endorsement of wisdom is very important. Like the dead flies, it's a stinking, it's nothing, it is useless. But when you bring it to the apothecary and they know how to uh, put some uh, other things, um, then they can make that stinking to be done. Uh, it would be more savory and you can smell it so good and so on. The true wisdom, regardless of how uh, worst thing it might be, when God has given you the right wisdom, you would remain acceptable before God. That is the most important thing. In verse 2, not only the, the endorsement of wisdom, the exercises of man's wisdom. The exercises so it says in verse 2 as you can see a wise man's heart is at his right hand but a fool's heart is at his left so I told you I'm so thankful to the Lord for giving me joy of searching this and it was told about the exercises uh, both on these two, there was a comparison. How do they exercise it? Two things about the wise man. How we exercise it. Number one, wise man's heart. Okay. If, if can, uh, when man's heart is right, he stays pure. 
That's exactly what the Bible is telling here. Because a wise man's heart is, the Bible says in verse 2, at his right hand. When, when your life, when your faith, when your trust, when your understanding, because God has given you the right wisdom by having Jesus in the first place as our Savior, depending upon the working power of the Holy Spirit, believing to the Word of God as it has been said by Jesus in John 8, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay? A wise man's heart is, when the wise man's heart is right, you stay pure and uh, you know what is uh, impurity before god uh, the bible declares and describes in the book of galatians chapter 5 about the works of the flesh we study that in the past every sunday in romans 12 2 the three kinds of mind and this is all about the toxic mind and uh, from time to time uh, all of us are guilty of that if we are not very careful but when our heart okay is right with god we stay in the pew secondly when man's heart is not only right he stays pure when man's heart is right okay he stands to the principles he stands to the principle he would never compromise he would never corrupt himself you know, so funny, uh, people keep on saying, I love Jesus, I love God, and so on. But um, there are things when the devil would put into their mind, for example, about how your service to God, how uh, you're coming to the church, you're reading the Bible, and so on, uh, bringing back to the Lord, uh, being uh, faithful in our tithes and our offerings. There are a lot of things. But see, God has given us all the principles. You have to reason out before God. That's the most important thing. You don't need to reason out with Brother Ben or me or any preachers and so on. What has been said and told to us, you search it from the Scripture. And pray hard. Let the Spirit of God to work in you. I, there, there are only two things. Uh, when the Word of God has no more effect in you, probably your heart has been already hardened by the Lord. That's why you heard it, you know it's true, but you don't really care it, and you're not even touched to it, you're not even affected onto it. Oh, that's very dangerous. Because uh, the Bible um, made it clear that the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than two any edged sword. Mm -hmm. Knowing that is in the mind and the soul and so on. That's why I always say, reiterate, uh, I can disguise, you can disguise, you can fool around to anyone else. Uh, but we can never fool around that. And don't be holier than thou. That's one thing, trying to prove to the people and show to the people how holy you are and so on. Your simplicity and your sincerity is well known to God. That's one thing. We can never caught God by surprise who you are and what you are. So why need to disguise anyway? When in reality, God knows already, even uh, a week from now, a day from now, an hour from now, or even 10 years from now, God knows exactly what you're going to do, what you're going to say, what you're going to accomplish. So what's the use of disguising and pretending? That's why a, a wise guy, okay, he doesn't only stay pure. His hand is on the right. But a wise guy, okay, he says, oh, when man's heart is right, he stands to the principles of God. So you do not make your own rules. We do not make our own rules. We have already the rule of God's word. No wonder why the Lord made it clear to our chosen nation, uh, to the people of Israel in Deuteronomy, Leviticus particular, Deuteronomy 6 and 8, that this book, should be into your heart the statutes and commandments and then god jehovah said thou shalt love the lord thy god with all your heart with all thy soul with all thy mind and the things that i have told you the statutes and commandments and so on 
You said, put them into your heart to do it and teach them to your children's children's children. And then Joshua, on the other hand, reaffirmed, he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do it. And the Bible says when you do it, then you can have prosperity and success. Don't think about temporal and material things. That is added in Matthew 6.33. But true prosperity is that you have a very excellent relationship and fellowship with God. That matters. That is the most important thing. Whatever you have today, probably you might say, you have been so materially and temporarily blessed of God, so be it. Praise God to that. Because God has been good to you. But that is not the uh, measurement and uh, the basis of God's kindness and goodness and success to your life. True success is that your life is right with God and you live right with God. That is true success. Regardless of what you have today, these are just addendum that God has given to us. So that is the right man. That when man's heart is not his heart is right he stands to the principle however he said here uh, but a full person his hand is on where the left okay so it means number one under that when man's heart is at left that means he is in other words he's not when man's heart is not right with god is not submissive to that. When man's heart is at left, he is defiant. Kaya nga, mag Tagalog eh, what is left? Kaliwa, bawal mga liwa. Diba? Tagalog yun eh, bawal ang kaliwete. So that alone is a good uh, joke. So it's not a joke, but it's reality. It's, it's bawal. Okay? So, when man's heart is at left, that means... He won't stay, he won't leave, and he is not for the principle for what the Lord is expecting him, and he doesn't have that. That's why he was called fool. He doesn't care about the right kind of wisdom. It says he is defiant. Defiant to what? Defiant to the authority of his God. That means he never said me. And you know what I mean? Okay, no matter how you justify when you violate the scripture, when you defy God, then you are not submissive. Secondly, when man's heart is at left, not only is defiant, when man's heart is at left, he is definitely what? Disobedient. Siyempre hindi susunod. He won't follow God. And no wonder why Jesus put it this way and I end up, then I read the verse. He said in Luke 6:46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Then in John 4, 15, he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. How many people would say they love Jesus? How many would say that Jesus is their Lord? He is their Savior. By head, by knowledge, they know Jesus is the Savior. He is their Savior. Is their master. Question is, do you obey him? Do you follow him? Do you take the principle that God wants you to have? You know, James put it this way, to him that knoweth to do good and do it not, what is next? To you it is a sin. You know what is right. You know what is wrong. You don't need to fool around. But you know the problem with people that's very dangerous and scary when it seems the Word of God and the Spirit of God doesn't work to you anymore. And that's one thing that you have to watch yourself. I end up on this uh, text from the book of Proverbs chapter 3. I'll just read it. Proverbs chapter 3. Verses 1 to 11, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, 
He said, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandment. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let mercy and truth, the Bible says, forsake thee, bind them okay, uh, about thy neck, write them upon the table of thy heart. Mark them with me. So shalt thou what? Find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. It's not that dignity. You don't need to demand dignity. But when you do, you have the right wisdom. It was Solomon himself who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. When you have the right wisdom, you find favor from God and from people. See, here the Bible teaches you don't need to demand it. It is a natural thing when you have the right wisdom. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy patch. Then getting back to chapter 2, including in here in verse 2 going down. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. Yet if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her, or wisdom, as silver, and searcheth for her, as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find of knowledge for the lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge look at that the lord gives wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding he layeth up sound wisdom to whom for the righteous he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly and then he said he keepeth the paths of the judgment of judgment and preserve it the way of his saints that would save you from any trouble then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity yea every good path verse 10 and 11 when wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul discretion shall preserve thee understanding shall keep thee that's why chapter 10 Solomon recommended the wisdom it is more important than the wealth more important than dignity more important than the things that people uh, people treasure so much True wisdom is with Jesus, with the help of the Holy Spirit in the line of the Scripture. And as you have seen it, may it is my prayer that your heart is on the right and not on the left. As I close, wisdom secures, stabilizes one's life while he lived in this world with God's guidance and grace okay wisdom secures and stabilizes one's life as it has been said while we live in this world with god's guidance and grace any difficulties and why well, you know why people are being depressed and stressed and sun because they don't have the true wisdom that comes from the word of God. Just like a dead fly, when they put something into it, that smell is going to go out and change to good thing. And so not the folly of man. But when we have the wisdom, you can see things clearly that you will always seek to give honor and glory to God. May God bless us. Then we're going to go on verses 2 to verse 10 this coming Wednesday and then the, uh, the last uh, remaining verses will be the following Wednesday 
so that we can do more. Then after that, Lord willing, we are on chapter 11 and chapter 12. Come early this coming Sunday. Again, uh, the third group. And thank you so much for those who are bringing food. Uh, I mean the birthday celebrants and to those who are uh, having a wedding celebrants. And um, I guess that's it. Okay. God bless you all. And have a good evening. Uh, Brother Lloyd, dismiss us in order of prayer. Amen. Don't forget on Saturday, Men's Fellowship. God bless you all.